Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Ball Cap Bible Study. Today I'm rocking the uh, America hat. You see there, and uh, I got this at the uh, Bowler Jack concert. Uh, so, and I paid for it. They didn't give it to me. It was a, it was not a gift. Um, if you know me, you know I don't I don't roll like that. Uh, also, Black Rifle. Now this was a gift. I won't I won't embarrass the person by saying who got it for me, but. Um, Black Rifle Coffee Company. Uh, they saw my Black Rifle coffee mug that my son got me, the, the grenade. So, all right. We are on the Sermon on the Mount. Now, uh, before I get started, I hope uh, nobody received a bunch of damage last night from the storms. Uh, bless your hearts. We had, it was rocking and rolling last night. We have you know, all of us, we have friends out in Shawnee in that area. So if you know of anybody that had some damage or might need some help, uh, feel free to let me know. We've got guys with chainsaws and we can get out and help some people. Um, uh, so just uh, contact me. You know how to get a hold of me, uh, that kind of thing. Announcements. We have a, a men's prayer breakfast on uh, March 11th. Uh, James Langford will be speaking. So uh, it's like six dollars for breakfast, and if you don't eat, uh, you can just come for free and listen to James. Uh, tell your neighbors and friends, bring people. Um, he will not be speaking politically. He will just be speaking, um, you know, spiritually and and bringing uh, something from God's word. So anyway, we'll we'll just uh, have a good time with with uh, the senator, uh, and so you know we kind of. Even though he's from Texas, we we still you know feel like we we raised him uh, here in Oklahoma, so uh, couldn't be more proud. Um, so that's on the eleventh. Then uh, Rachel and I will leave uh, that Sunday afternoon, the twelfth, for Kentucky. We'll go see Andy. He's out there in Kentucky, and he's he's uh, doing some uh, marketing and social uh, media for um, an investment firm out there in Louisville. Uh, we plan on going to see the ark, so hopefully uh, we can do all that, uh, get all that kind of stuff done. Then um, uh, we'll maybe if we if we have enough time, we'll we'll run up. If you've never seen it on on uh, TV, the Air Force Museum up in uh, Dayton, Ohio, is really really cool. It's about three hours away from Louisville, so we'll try that. And then of course after that comes the revival, so you all know uh, about that. Um, by the way, that, that week will be spring break, so we will not have our early bird special on Wednesday. Uh, what would that be, the uh, 12th, 13th, 14th, the 15th, Wednesday the 15th? Uh, we won't have um, an early bird special, uh, and those of you that come know what that is. So um, anyway, uh, what else? Uh, we are on Sermon on the Mount. I'm going to make this one pretty brief, um, but I want to talk about Matthew in general and Sermon on the Mount. Matthew is that is that tax collector, that publican that that Jesus called. He's a Jew, uh, but if you've seen the Chosen, they they've uh, uh, gone in a direction I would never have picked for Matthew. But um, it made it interesting and entertaining. Uh, that's a pretty neat little series. If you've never seen it, I highly recommend it. Um, but don't take it as something to worship. Uh, but it is it is interesting. But Matthew, all the Gospels are trying to do something individually. Um, you have three Gospels that are called synoptic Gospels. That just means they're similar, uh, parallel, but they're also a little bit different, which is good uh, because if they were word for word identical, you know, people would be accusing the Bible writers of plagiarism and, and that kind of thing. Uh, I've heard it explained you know, if there are people on three different corners of intersection and two cars, you know, one of them T-bones another, uh, they're going to see the same wreck, but they're going to have different perspectives, different worldviews, different ways of approaching their eyewitness testimony. So that's why uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are uh, somewhat different while they're still very much the same. John is its own, he's his own breed of cat, and uh, he, he he writes a, a, a gospel trying to get us to understand what I say are the three L's, that Jesus is Lord, he's light, and he's love. Um, that's a whole nother study. Um, 
John or uh, Luke is is kind of that investigative journalist. He he has interviewed people and he gets eyewitness accounts and testimonies. And like I like you know, uh, most of you know, Luke and Acts go together. Truly, really Luke and Luke 2.0 is what Acts is. He wrote them both. Uh, Mark very fast, very fast. Mark he's he's always saying and immediately, and immediately, immediately. Sixteen um, chapters, not not uh, long. Uh, but he, he has a sense of urgency. You can tell it's written by somebody young, passionate, you know, let's go, go, go. Uh, it says all the time. And immediately they crossed back over the Sea of Galilee. And immediately they went into this town. Immediately he arose and blah, blah, blah. So you get this real big sense of urgency. Now, Matthew, we're, we're studying the Sermon on the Mount. We're in chapter five. Uh, Matthew worked for the Romans. Think about that. So who had the authority in all the land? Rome. Well, whereas in John, you see all these I am statements. Uh, I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, life. I am, you know, pushes you back to Moses and the burning bush. Uh, so Jesus is really declaring himself uh, to be God. He and the Father one and the same. Um, Matthew is trying to get people, they understood Roman authority. He was trying to get them to understand uh, the authority of Christ, the authority, you know, Jesus's authority, um, several times. Well, at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, the people left amazed because he spoke like one who had authority. Uh, after he talks about whose image is on this coin, the people walk away amazed because he spoke like one who had authority. At the end of the, um, the book of Matthew, we have what we commonly call the Great Commission. I often ask a trick question. Many of you have heard this before from me. Uh, I often ask a trick question. How does the Great Commission go? Can somebody, you know, who has that memorized? Somebody will raise their hand and they'll say, go ye therefore and all. No, that, I, I stop them. Stop. That's not how it goes. It starts off, Jesus says, he walks up and he says, all authority has been given me uh, on earth and in heaven. It's kind of like he has the scepter in his hand and he walks up and he says, there's a new sheriff in town, boys. So uh, Matthew is trying to demonstrate authority. And here in the Sermon on the Mount, um, you know, these are Jesus' own words. He is laying down authority. We're into the section, uh, the, the you've heard, but I say section. So Jesus is saying, you know, I don't really care what you've heard. Here's, here's you know, what time it is. Um, he, he tells them how the cow eats the cabbage. So. The, the first part is, and we're going to go through all these separately. So there's part on anger. Uh, there's a part on adultery. <laughs> I'll tell this joke again next week. But um, it's kind of like the the pastor that said, how come nobody came down front at invitation this Sunday? And, and this uh, old deacon leaned in and said, well, you preached on adultery. What do you think? <laughs> so um, divorce, uh, oaths and vows, loving your enemies. Um, you know, those kinds of things. So today we're just going to, we're not going to tackle anger and, and reconciliation, but we're going to uh, look at what Jesus said and then just very briefly touch on it because um, I'm trying to make these shorter so you guys aren't so bored. Uh, so here's here's what Jesus says. Sermon on the Mount. This is verse 21 of chapter five. So you can go back and, and look at it if you want to. It says, you have heard that it was said to the ancients, do not murder. And anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I say, I tell you, that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, uh, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, will be subject to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, you fool, will be subject to the fire of hell. Wow, that's pretty harsh, just for calling somebody a fool. We'll talk on that here in just a second. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there you remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. Reconcile quickly with your adversary while you are still on the way to court. Otherwise, he may hand you over to the judge. And the judge may hand you over to the officer. And you may be thrown into prison. Truly, I will tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. Now, there's a whole metaphor going on there with, uh, because until we're reconciled with God, we're all adversaries uh, of the Lord. So um, 
uh, we won't even touch on on that theology point, but uh, you know we should be reckoned. But I wanted to I wanted to focus on our relationship with with people, um, especially this one part. You know when we says, but anyone who says you fool will be subject to the fire. So so Jesus is like you have heard it is said don't murder, but I'm telling you I say uh, even if you call somebody a fool now. Here's what I want you to see and to know. Uh, we throw that word around, oh, he's cut and fool, or he's such a foolish fellow, or, you know, um, look at that fool, uh, or get a load of that fool, that kind of thing. You know, and we don't mean anything uh, destructive by it. But here's what uh, super harsh word back, back in, in those days, 2,000 years ago, because Jesus always would push you back to the Old Testament. Um, when he said, I am the good shepherd, he's he pushes them back to the 23rd Psalm. The 23rd Psalm was their amazing grace. You know, we we know that. We, you know, we we think of like the t-shirt that says, I'm the wretch the song sings about. I, I need that t-shirt. But you know, when he says, I says the Lord is my shepherd, well, he says, I'm the good shepherd. He's he's always pushing them back to the Old Testament. When he holds up the coin, later we'll see in Matthew. Whose, whose image is on this? Uh, then render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and render unto the Lord what is the Lord's. He's pushing them back to let us make man in our image. He's he's pushed. So here, when he says, but anyone who says you fool will be subject to the fire of hell. Well, what, why is that? Why is that such a big deal? What, I mean, calling somebody a, a fool. You know, we're talking about the fool's folly and all that kind of stuff. Because back then, um, He's pushing them back. He's pushing us back to the Old Testament truth um, that the proverb says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Those are condemning words. Calling somebody a fool 2,000 years ago was condemning. But the truth is, um, it, it's like committing spiritual murder. You know, here's the thing. I don't need to condemn anybody because they're already condemned until they accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. Everyone is condemned. Uh, so, you know, you also go back to like Proverbs 1-7. Um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Well, you know, the opposite of that is also true. God's saying, okay, be a fool. Don't fear me. You know, but you're just condemning yourself. So, um, we if once we understand the, you know, Jesus method and and how he uses his authority and how he he pushes us back to the truth of the Old Testament all the time uh then then we start to realize you know when when he told uh Satan man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God he was that's when Jesus or when Satan told him if you are the son of God uh turn these rocks these stones into bread well what Jesus is actually telling him he's saying you fool. <laughs> he said, I am the rock and I am the bread and I am the word. All right. That's all for now. Uh, that's enough. Chew on that. Leave me a comment if you like it uh, or give me a question. If you don't, let's, let's work through it. Uh, love you guys. And I will see you soon.